Christian living, Christian living Christian living radio It's a lifestyle Christian living, Christian living Christian living radio It's a lifestyle Christian living I'm a man, I don't like mistakes. Mistakes cost money and time. And uh, especially when you're dealing with ministry, because when you make a mistake or you don't repent or whatever, God stops, he loves you. I mean, you, you, you still gonna go to heaven because you know, you, you ask God to come in your heart. Not the issue, the issue is, but you have to kind of back up. And sometimes, you no, know, you can't go as fast backing up as you do going forward. Because you'll blow a gear. If you're in a car or whatever. So if you got your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of Luke chapter four. I love Luke four because there's such a powerful, powerful passage of scripture. And I've realized and wondered how come so many people have made mistakes. Some of them had destroyed their ministries or really delayed it and hindered it for many, many years. And then they finally got back on track. And I found out something about Satan. He's not a faith devil. He's a flesh devil. He never tempts you in the spirit. He can only tempt you in the flesh. But if you crucify your flesh daily instead of Sunday, you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. He can't tempt you spiritually. He's spiritually dead. And I'll give you a prime example. Have you ever been tempted to tithe? <laughs> well, no. Why is that? Because tithing is a spiritual concept. You have to understand it from the spirit. And once you understand it from the spirit, you'll tithe all the days of your life. Because the word of God is not soulish. I said that in one of my sessions. See, the word of God is spirit. That's why the natural man receiveth not the things of God. Because they're foolish unto him, neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. Because, see, most people, they'll look at the word of God in the soulless room, in the mind, the will, and the emotion. And they'll read something Jesus said, and they'll say, well, I know he said that, but he just can't seem to mean that. But see, because you're looking at it from the soulless room. Instead of from the spirit, because we worship God in spirit and in truth. He said, I'm a spirit, Jesse, and so are you. Made in my, my image. So I want to read, and I like the old King James Version. I want to talk tonight, and I want you to listen to me. Because the Lord, when he gave this to me, he said, uh, and I, I, I preached it, I think it was last Sunday, some, at the cup of the church, a piece of it anyway. Yeah, I want to talk tonight between the difference between a temptation and a manifestation. The difference between a temptation and a manifestation, which are very, very close. Because see, t- Satan's going to always tempt you with something you want. Something you possibly believe in for. And how do you know the difference when they look so much alike? And God gives us this in Luke chapter 4, verse 1. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. Notice he wasn't half full. He was full. Everybody say full. Full. See, and when you're full, which means you can't put no more in you. He's being full of the Holy Ghost. Returned from Jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness. Being 40 days tempted of the devil. Now underline this Jesus being full of the Holy, Holy Ghost in your Bible there. Verse 2, being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said, notice the devil didn't talk until he got hungry. Because when you're hungry, you can make a bad decision. If you go shopping for groceries when you're hungry, you're going to go broke. You're going to buy everything you can get your hands on. I'm going to read verse 2 again. Being 40 days tempted of the, of the devil. In those days he did eat nothing. And after, when he ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, underline the word if. Because see, if is a devil's word. And I'll deal with that in a few minutes. And the devil said unto him, verse 3, If thou be the son of God, command that this stone that it be made bread. 
Jesus answered him saying, notice there was no time frame. He immediately answered. It is written. Now, before you say it's written, you got to know what is written. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed him, him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, all this power, which means wealth, and, and will I give and the glory of them. Glory is the wealth and power is the ability to get it. For that is delivered unto me. Now who delivered it to him? The first Adam. Yeah. See, see the problem with the church world in, this, in the secular world, they love the first Adam more than they love the second Adam. Yeah. Yeah. It was delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. If, that's that devil word. Thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, saying, Do you have the ability to tell the devil to get behind you and you're not worried about it? Or you prefer to kind of keep your eye on the boy in front of you? (laughs) But when you're full of the Holy Ghost, he surrounds you the Holy Ghost. He said, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, that's Logos, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. He brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. Satan never misses church, do you? Never. He says church is the most important thing in Satan's life. Did you know that? Why? To try to stop it. Because that's what destroys him. The gates of hell can't prevail against the church. Watch this. He brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If, there's that devil word, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down from hence. Now why is he saying that? Because he don't know. He thought Abel was the son of God, so he had Cain kill it. Trying to find this Jesus because he's not a faith devil, he's a flesh devil. That's right. He said, if, if thou be the son of God, Cast thyself down from hence. Watch this. So now Satan begins to quote Logos. Satan knows a lot about the Bible, more than most theologians. And you need a good theologian to help you misunderstand it. This is Satan talking now. For it is written, notice it's black, it ain't red. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. Now how did he know that? Because at one time he took care of Jesus. He's an angel, an angel, an angelic being who was a worship leader. And in their hands, they shall bear thee up. So he's got power. Lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus answered and said unto him, it is said. Now he goes from Logos to Rhema. He said, let me deal now with the spoken word. See, Satan can only quote Logos. But God has given you the ability to quote Rhema, which moves mountains. It is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Read that. You are tempting somebody you shouldn't be messing with. When the devil ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. So that's three months. How'd you like to go three months without a problem in the world? A season. Now, years ago, I preached on this passage and I dealt with the first temptation. Turn the stone into bread. Jesus said, no. Why? You never you. You can write this down if you want. You never use the word of God for personal advantage. Why? Because see, the word of God has already advantaged you. He said, if you speak, you will receive. When you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have it. So you never use the word of God for personal advantage because it's already advantaged you. Then he took him up and said, hey, let me show you these things. And uh, all you got to do is just worship me. So what Jesus said, and I'll paraphrase it, the second temptation, never associate yourself with wicked people, even for the attainment of a good end. Never do that. I've had people say, how can you build buildings under budget? Because I will not allow somebody that doesn't know Jesus to build God's building. Why? Because Psalms 1 says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Because see, if you're receiving counsel from the ungodly, you're receiving counsel from him or her who's making money. And they're interested in making as much money as they can on this particular project. That's why a lot of you struggle to pay that note. And you go way over budget. 
because you possibly hired somebody you shouldn't. You never bring the devil in your camp, especially when you're building something for God. So the first temptation, never use the word of God for personal advantage. The second temptation, never associate yourself with wicked people, even for the attainment of a good end, even though you're believing for something. Now then Satan said, that ain't working, so let's take him up there and quote some scriptures since he's, he's scripture minded. He does all that. And he said, now all you got to do is just jump off. He tried that again on Jesus at the cross through the thief. He said, if you're really son of God, just take yourself off the cross and take me off too. Same temptation, but in a different, with a different bag on it, a different color. And that third temptation was, you never perform a godly act in a prideful spirit. And a lot of Pentecostals in the, in the beginning of Pentecost did that. They start casting out devils and say, what's your name, devil? Because Jesus asked the devil, what's your name? My name is Legion. What street you live in hell? Who cares where he lives? Who cares what his name is? Just tell him to shut up and get out. Jesus didn't let him talk very much. So in other words, you never use the word of God for personal advantage. Number two, you never associate yourself with wicked people for the attainment of a good end. And number three, you never perform a godly act in a prideful spirit. See, he's trying, he is reaching out to Jesus' pride. Now, I want to go back to the second temptation. The difference between temptation and manifestation. And the devil taking him up to a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world, that's verse 5. In a moment of time, and the devil said unto him, all this power, or do not most will I give, and the glory, the wealth of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore will worship me. If you look at your Amplified in verse 7, he said, if you worship me once. Notice he did it when no one was around. So nobody going to know we're out in the desert. It's just me and you, man. Hey, and what did I just show you? Let me tell you what he showed Jesus. He showed Jesus the Roman Empire. He showed Jesus the Persian Empire. He showed Jesus the Indian Empire. He showed Jesus the Chinese Empire and every other kingdom on the earth. Why did Jesus come? For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Didn't say would not. Say should not perish, but have everlasting life. He showed Jesus everything Jesus wanted. Think about that for a minute. Everything Jesus was believing for. All you got to do is worship me. It's an, who going to know? It's just us out here. Once. It don't have to be every day. Once. All it took for Adam and Eve to lose what they had was one bite. Now some people say it was an apple. Okay, we'll, we'll call it an apple. They didn't have to eat the whole apple. Just one bite. Think about that. The difference between a temptation and a manifestation Write this down if you're taking notes. Beware of the beginnings of discontentment and covetousness. It becomes easy when you're hungry. When you're hungry, you're going to make decisions you shouldn't make. You're going to eat more than you should eat. You're going to buy more groceries than you should buy. He waits till you get discontented. Maybe you've been believing God for a long time to see something happen. He started getting discontented. But what stopped, what, what made Jesus know the difference between a temptation and a manifestation? He was full of the Holy Ghost. Yet he's looking at everything he's believing for. Everything. He's hungry. All you got to do is, hey, nobody out here but us. Just once. Just once. And they amplify this verse 7. Read it. They'll say, just once. See, he figured he's weak now. What well, Satan didn't realize that he was full of the Holy Ghost. He may have been hungry, but he was really full spiritually. But he waited for discontentment and covetousness. But Jesus wouldn't covet because covetousness and discontentment could not enter into him because he was full. Write this down. There are no short roads to manifestation. If it's a small price, it's a big lie. There's no short roads 
to manifestation. If it's a, <laughs> if it's a small price, it's a big lie. I've had people say, I, I preach at Bible schools all the time. And I got guys say, man, I'm going into ministry and I want to start up making a hundred thousand dollars a year. Six figures. That's great, son. You done lost your ever loving mind. Why? Because you, you, have you ever made a hundred thousand? No, no. Well, then you don't know how to handle no hundred thousand dollars. See, everybody thinks me and Jerry and Brother Copeland and Gloria, we've had this all our life. No, it took some time. It took some discipline. It took some dedication. It took some commitment to understand how to receive without getting intoxicated with the success. See, the world is intoxicated with the success so bad that if you get a jet, they're mad at you. You shouldn't have that. Because a drunk man wants it all. But when you full of the Holy Ghost, all those things are a tools. What is jewelry but the byproduct of gold or platinum or steel or whatever, whatever you're wearing? You see what I'm saying? It's just a byproduct. But when you understand, what's the original thing? And there are a lot of, I've seen some great men and women build some beautiful churches and lost them. Because they got discontented. They got hungry and Satan came. Mine, they got the building up, but they couldn't pay it. And it hurt more people than it ever helped. How many times that ministers, pastors would tell the, their staff, you got to give to this, to this project and make them give and get more. They would do it. And then when they couldn't meet the note, lay the people off that gave. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. I heard Brother Hagin say that, so I adopted that myself. <laughs> See, there are no short roads to manifestation. If it's a small price, it's a big lie. The ifs, write this down, the ifs of Satan are a splendid lie. The ifs of Satan are a splendid lie. If is a devil's word, and what does it do? It loosens the cord of faith because it automatically sets a doubt into your life. If, I want you to step out by faith, but if it don't work, now you're trying to protect God's reputation. And he don't need your protection. You need his. So if it's a devil, if thou be the son of God. Now, if you do this, I'll do that. Now, watch this. Watch the slyness of Satan. He says, all shall be thine. Now, that's what Jesus came for. To touch the world. Hired 12 apostles to go in the world. Everything Jesus was believing for Satan had it, but he had conditions to it. So the ifs of, boy, y'all are quiet. Y'all listening here. The ifs of Satan are a splendid lie. If is a devil's word that loosens the cord of faith. Let me give you an example of that. When I went into the ministry, I'm from, this, I'm from South Louisiana. I was born and raised in New Orleans. In fact, I met that. They said, have you lived in New Orleans all your life, brother Jesse? I said, not yet. We still here. Glory to God. <laughs> Now, I've always liked Texas. Y'all know some, my, the Southwest believers, I, I wear boots and jeans. I just, oh, oh. I've always wanted to be a cowboy, but I don't know how to, I don't even know how to handle a cow, much less be the boy of it. <laughs> but I like, I, I like it, you know, and, and I love Texas because it's land. And glory to God, I like land, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So when I went out in the full-time ministry, it, well, actually, when I got born again, the Lord said, go back to Louisiana, because me and Kathy started our marriage out in Arlington, Texas. We got, we got married at Holy Rosary Catholic Church there in Louisiana. Three days later, we were in Arlington, and I was on the contract at the end of the Six Flags with Six Flags over Texas. Yeah, the, the, I can't think of that. Like, Angus Wynn was the head who owned all that stuff, you know, uh, and, uh, and, and, and I was an entertainer. That's how I started. So, my God, after I got born again, I said, let's go back to Texas. I, oh, when I started preaching, I went full time. Now, watch this. It's everything. I just wanted to go to Dallas. Or Fort Worth, or I just need, I want to come to Texas. I said, I just like Texas. I'm going to buy me a cow. <laughs> Maybe I can get me some land. Because see, we don't sell land by the acre where we live. We get it by the square foot. Very expensive in Louisiana. Woo, Lord. Because there's no more land. We lose 100 yards a minute just on the coastal erosion. And they're doing everything they can to stop that. Now watch this. One of the biggest churches ever in the city of Dallas called me. I had been preaching two or three years and I like, Richard, if I got a $200 offering back then, that, that'd be big money. 
Now you gotta understand, it was nothing for me to make a million dollars when I was when I was playing music. That, that ain't nothing. But I thought you had to be poor. So you know, it's what I didn't mind being poor because you know, I was raised poor. But I hadn't studied the word. I didn't understand sowing and reaping. I just understood sowing. Now watch this. This wonderful church had six thousand people in it. That's big way back. That's nineteen seventy nine. And they said, Jesse, you are so unique and different. We would like for you to come to Dallas, Texas. I thought, that's got to be God. Because that's exactly what I'm believing for. We want you to come and all you have to do is preach every Sunday night at our church. You can still be an evangelist. You can still travel Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But but get back Sunday so you can preach Sunday night. We will give you a house. A house. We will give you a car. Oh, God. A car. Yeah. Oh, and we will give you offices and we'll put all the furniture free of charge. I said, this is everything I believe. Because I tell Kathy, boy, if we could go to Dallas and get a, you know, we can get some offices. And, and, you know, and, and I would say, you know how many preachers are in Dallas? And all that kind of stuff. And all, you know. It was everything I wanted, but they had an if to it. And when the if came out, I said, well, it's just a small thing. That's what causes you to fall, but it's a big lie. That's exactly what I wanted. And the Lord said, don't take that. I said, but that's what I'm, that's what I'm believing for. He said, well, believe me for it, not them. And I said, how come you just got to ruin everything? (laughs) I wanted it, Jerry. I wanted that, man. I I, I was believing for that. I said, Lord Jesus. So we have a Cajun uh, terminology called Bude. I started Bude. Y'all would call it pout. (laughs) He said, okay, you little flesh creature. I said, okay, God, forgive me. I'll stay, I'll stay put. I'll do what you want me to do. But do I have to like it? He said, no, you just have to love it. <laughs> Within six months, that church split, messed up, adultery, fornication, financial improprieties. If I'd have been in the middle of that, I'd have got slammed. But in my mind, I had this deal, all shall be thine. Just like Satan said to Jesus. It was, it was a temptation and not a manifestation. Write this down. Man cannot be happy without speech. Oh, I love what they said, Billy. Beware of the art of conversation though. Satan knows how to talk. And he waits till you're discontented and hungry. How I many of you have been believing God a long time for something? Oh, you end up. Most people do. say faith and patience you inherit. That's right. Let patience have its perfect work that you're perfect and entire. That's in the book of James. Wanting nothing. Patience will get you what you want. Not need. If you let it develop you. No, you know, you can learn more from a mistake than you can from a, a blessing. Because sometimes people know, don't know how to handle the blessing. And if you learn from the mistake never to do it again, it'll give you great wisdom. And, there, and you can see even the patriarch, made, Abraham made a mistake. He made a mistake over Ishmael. We got that problem today. Yes. See, the problem never goes away because Satan uses it, not for just one generation. He's not interested in just touching one person. He wants to get them all. So write this down. Never invite death to rock the cradle of spiritual life. You never invite death to rock the cradle of spiritual life. Because you see, Satan never misses church in the book of Revelation chapter 2. I believe it's verse 13. That, that he says to the church at Pergamos, he, this Satan has a seat in the church. Mm-hmm. He's sitting in the church. Now, I, I, now, don't misunderstand. J- Satan will not put baseball or football over church service. 
And nothing wrong with going to football's game. Of, I'm not talking, I mean, he will not do it. Because it just takes one word, a rhema, and it destroys him. So he causes confusion. But he does it with things you like. Notice how he twists his things. It's no longer gambling in Vegas. It's gaming. It's no longer adultery. It's an affair. Remember the, the movie Affair to Remember? Notice that. He's twisting that. Or we call it today spinning it. Notice how he changes those things. Because see, everything he does is very sensual. Very fleshy. He'll make a man that got gray hair on his chest make him think he still got the stuff. <laughs> man, you need to talk to your wife. She'll tell you. she say, you ain't got the stuff no more, boy. But to that crazy man, oh, I tell you what, boy, I still got it. That's all I'm going to say about that. But anyway, <laughs> you never invite death to rock the cradle of spiritual life. Why would a church invite Satan to sit in it? There are churches now that you can go to and there are, we have, a lot of times we have cafes and cappuccino. Now they serve wine and beer and liquor. Let me help those people that believe that's okay to drink. You know what the government calls it? Spirits. They tax it. Do you know what they call it? Sin tax. And you call it Jack Daniel, black label. Johnny Walker Red. CC and seven. Canadian Club. You know all that? Drank every bit of it. 151 Puerto Rican rum. Bacardi Light, Ooh, PCP, Crystal Met, Heroin, Cocaine, Snort it through a hundred dollar bill up your nose. Know. Whoa! Isn't it amazing I'm still alive? Everything I said, I did. And the devil made me think I was having fun. Because it was sensual. I had invited death to rock my cradle. Thank God for the mercy of God, a yeah. praying mama and a praying wife. Yeah. I wouldn't be here. You see what I'm saying? But it's so tempting. But it's what you want. Ah, Re- write this down. Don't bargain with Satan. If you do, you're gratifying ambition at the cheapest rate. Don't bargain with Satan. If you do, you are gratifying ambition at the cheapest rate. A worldly mind will welcome it. See, a worldly mind will tell you that the Bible is hate speech. Do you know in the great nation of Canada, you can't preach against home? You can't preach, my God, in a certain chapter in the book because it deals with homosexuality? Oh, no. Now they look at the Bible and say, that's hate speech. Why are we having so much trouble? I heard uh, one of those guys on Fox that uh, I can't call his name, but he was the head person there. He said, because people no longer believing in God anymore. Look what we got. Look what we have today. And the church, God gave the church an opportunity on 9-11. My God, man. People went to church after uh, they were attacked there in Manhattan. And what did the church do? The same stupid thing they did. They gave no life, no nothing, and people quit within two to three weeks. Isn't that amazing? We had an opportunity. I was asked to speak at the Senate in uh, the state of Louisiana. Remember that, Kathy? Right after Hurricane Katrina. Oh, all the world was focused on Katrina. So the Senate there in St. Louis asked me to come and speak a word. Not enough. So I thought, man, that's hard. Why would they want me, you know? But I went because Kathy told me to go. I, I'm not political at all. I tell you if I like you or I don't like you. Now, you know, I, I, I do that at the voting box, at the ballot box. I want to know what you believe in and you know, what's your agenda and what's your platform and blah, 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 this and that. Make a long story short, I went up there and, and uh, so the senator, or the, uh, the head of the Senate, he says, now, brother, he said, Reverend DePlantis, they're they going to be listening to everything you say, but they're very noisy and loud. They got all their, got all their uh, computers on. He says, so don't be offended by that. Every speaker, you just have to speak over the, 
over all the hollering and talking. I said, okay. So I walked up and I said, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Reverend Jester the Planners and I've been invited to speak to you. And, uh, and while they're still talking, I said, and I've come to pray. When I said pray, the whole place went stone cold silent. They turned around and looked. The, sent, the head of the president of the Senate went, I mean, qu- nobody say a word. I said, what? From all kind of bosh. And I said, the eyes of the world are on us and on the state of Louisiana because of Hurricane Katrina. We have an opportunity to be a blessing to those that have been tragically hurt. We have an opportunity to show people how we can turn tragedy into a blessing. We can, how people who are helping us show and show them the results of what the great state of Louisiana will do because they open up their hearts. They open up the Astrodome there in Houston so people could have a place to go because New Orleans was flooded out. You could, not, you could hear a pin drop. And then I prayed for them and they all bowed their heads. And I said, thank you for this great opportunity. Don't let it go by because God opened it up for this great state. And I walked away and that senator says, can I take a picture with you? (laughs) He said, my God. He said, would you like to help me on my campaign? I said, no. (laughs) I said, I'm not really political. I said, I just came here to pray. He said, my God. He said, I've been here, was it 28 years, something like that? He said, it's never been silent. And guess what? There's a billion dollars that was given. Nobody knows where it's at. <laughs> Trying to find it. And I had wonderful pastors, great pastors that set $100,000 donations. They said, if you wanted to get to the people, you sent it to Jesse the Planets. And I told my staff and I told my finance about, we will not keep $1 of this. I want records that the, that money comes in to the people that use it. And my God, we gave away $3 million to help people all over the state of Louisiana that were flooded out. Am I right, Kathy? It was amazing. Never, never kept my, You know, one preacher told me, he said, man, I ain't getting money to that. He said, man, I built me another building. I never could haul a razor, so I just took it. That's fraud. What's his name? I can't tell you that. That has to do with the United States government. That's none of my business. So you don't bargain with Satan. If you do, you're gratifying ambition at the cheapest rate. See, a worldly mind will welcome it. But if you are full of the Holy Ghost, you will know the difference between the appetite of evil and the appetite of goodness. See, if you're full of the Holy Ghost, you'll know the difference between the appetite of evil and the appetite of goodness. Go with me to the book of Romans chapter 12. The you know, book of Romans chapter 12. I want you to see this here. You got to know the difference between the appetite of evil. Notice that. And the appetite of goodness. Romans chapter 12. I believe it's verse ooh, 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. What we did was we took the evil of Katrina and we overcame it with good. Yes, yes. One, of the, one of the greatest things ever happened to me, Jerry. This man walked in with his seven-year-old daughter. And she was real small, seven-year-old Kelly. Real little. They came in and he said, but he said, but Jesse, he said, man, I, I, he said, I've lost my house. Uh, he said, my house is flooded out and everything. He said, now, see, you got to understand, not only did people lose their houses, they lost their jobs. It was 60,000 businesses destroyed within an hour and a half. All the banks were destroyed. The credit card grid, you couldn't use anything. Only thing that worked was a gun and cash. I'm telling you, kill you for five cents, buddy. When you've been on top of an of a overpass at 95 degrees and 100% humidity with no water, no food for days, you'll kill somebody. So he came in and what me and Kathy had, we listened to the Lord and before Katrina hit, we rented as many apartments, condos, you know, out of New Orleans because we knew people would need some help. And, and none of our ministry was, nothing was hurt in our ministry. So our, our ministry became a staging thing. So Kathy opened up Covenant Compassion Center so we could help people. I mean, it was amazing what was going on. So this man come in, I said, listen. I said, I got a place for you to stay. What? What? I said, I got a place. I said, how many in your family? He said, well, I got three kids and my wife. Meanwhile, he said, I, I, he said, I, I, he said, you said, he said, what's it going to cost me? I said, not a thing. I said, how about six months for free? And if you need more, just let me know. He said, are you serious? I said, yes, sir. He said, but I don't have no furniture. I said, I cut a deal with a furniture guy. And he told, he, he gave me a great deal. So I, I said, all brand new furniture's in it. So they went, the little girl grabbed my leg. Oh, it touched me when I think about that. 
She said, Daddy, I told you Jesus and Brother Jesse would help us. <laughs> oh, I tell you, heart out. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Lord. I, you remember that? I, I didn't know what to say. I said, sweetheart, everything going to be all right. I said, take six months. You need more, I'll give you more than that. I'll take care of everything. Watch this. What I was doing, I was making people aware. I had an opportunity to do good, to overcome evil. Jesus had an opportunity. He overcame Satan. The thing that he wanted was the world and Satan showed it to him, but he overcame it with the goodness of who Jesus was. Do you know that man was back in my office in two and a half months? He said, Brother Jesse, I pulled all the drywall out. He said, now we don't have no carpets on the floor, it's a slab. He said, but that's all right, we're going to move into our house. I said, well, you got any furniture? Well, no, I don't have any. I said, well, take the furniture you got. He said, what? I said, the furniture in the apartment is yours. Oh, we can't do that, but that's all brand new furniture. I said, I got a deal with it. He said, yeah. That, I said, he'll, I'll buy some more and put it in there. And that little girl said, I told you he's a good man, that brother Jesse. <laughs> because you see, the first thing you got to do if you want to get things to go to normal is get the schools up. If you get the schools up, when kids start going back to school, things begin to return normal. And people were promised everything and were ripped off in the process of that. You see what I'm saying? So you never invite death to rock the cradle of spiritual life. Write this down. Know the difference between believing, and I said this last night, uh, yesterday, believing in God and believing God. I told the people yesterday, I said, man asked me, he said, do you believe in God? I said, no, I don't believe in God at all. Freaked him out. What? I said, I don't believe in God at all. I said, the devil believes in God and trembles. I said, some people believe in God don't tremble. I don't believe in God. I believe God. There's a vast difference between believing God and believing in God. The devil believes in God, but you certainly don't want to be him. But when you believe God, you do not separate God from his word. And you'll know the difference between a temptation and a manifestation. So that you won't make those mistakes. You see, you don't want to make mistakes because it takes a long time to recover after mistakes. And also maybe a lot of money and things of that nature. You see, I, I, I told people this and I'll say it again. I don't let doctors tell me, make me confess something I don't want. And I know what they're trying to do. They, 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 they're interested in genetics. And I understand genetics. I'm, I'm not dumb, man. I understand that. Well, do, do, do you have cancer in your family? Knob. I just said, what does knob mean? None of your business. <laughs> You've heard me say that. I said that the other day. I ain't going to confess cancer, diabetes. I don't care if it follows my family. I'm not going to do that. I will not do that. Now you can do what you want to do, but something that's so minor can cause something to come upon you because you start telling people what might happen instead of telling them what the Lord said. See, a manifestation is gained not by power, but by love. You see what Satan said, all shall be thine is good speech, but beware the small words and the small print. If you want to know if something's working, read the small print. What's in the small print is what that thing is. You ever notice commercials? It comes up, oh, it will do this. Wear this and your hair will grow. Now, a bald headed man go, oh. And all of a sudden, the little print come up. It go like this. They don't want you reading the small print because that's where the honesty is. And they paid enough money for somebody to pass that in the Congress. Right. Yes. Right. It's amazing to me about the Congress. Yep. Yeah. They wouldn't accept the hospitalization you got. That's right. Yeah. They ain't accepting a, what do they call it, affordable care. They got their own. They even have money that when they mess up sexually, they got a fund to pay the people to shut their mouths. Do you know they have the ability to use insider traded? They can go on Wall Street and find out what's coming up. Most of them get rich. You do that, you go to jail. And you want them to respect you? Yo, mama. Because it's a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And ladies and gentlemen, we need to stand up for God Almighty. This nation is blessed because of God Almighty. We have to stand up. And I'm not against anybody that's in sin. I'm against the sin. I'm just trying to tell people what's right and what's wrong. Well, we don't believe it. That don't change it. I told a person that day, I said, you can't hate me more than I love you. 
Give it your best shot. Because my love is a lot stronger than your hate. Hmm. Answering Satan at once helps you to know if the temptation is from within or from without. Jesus immediately answered him. You don't play with the temptation. Because a lot of it is manifestation. It's things you want. But you got to know the difference if it's coming from within or if it's coming from without. Prime example, that happened to me on, um, is it I-35 here in Dallas? Is that right? I-35? I used to drink a fifth of whiskey a day before I was born again. That's B.C., you know, before Christ. I mean, I drank, that's just during the day. I didn't count what I drank at night. And when I got born again, Kathy, I had a, I had a dramatic salvation. Kathy said I had to, know, uh, you know, learn a new language because every other word was cussing. And she just couldn't believe it. And the first thing I did as I was born again is I went to church the next day. And the way I went, I followed a school bus because I didn't know where to go to church. I was in Boston. I had got saved. Didn't understand that terminology. Didn't any of that. Now listen to it. Answering Satan at once helps you to know if the temptation is from within or without. So watch this. I started preaching the gospel more. I, I knew enough of Tom just to be dangerous. But boy, I just stepped out by faith in God. Just help me. Well, on Walnut, Walnut Lane, that's in Dallas, isn't it, Jerry? Walnut Lane. I like to exercise. I run a lot, do all kind of stuff. And so I did, a, I did a, a, my, my miles, Gloria, and a, so, and, but I didn't replenish my fluid. We got in the car and we driving. Now, I hadn't drank booze. Now, this is like 1982. I got born again in 1974. Hadn't drank. I mean, I was born again on a Saturday night and immediately stopped drinking. You, every doctor told me that could not have happened because you was a total alcoholic. They said I would die of cirrhosis of the liver by the time I was 24. I said, well, I'll die drunk. I'll slide out. I didn't care. I had no fear of Satan or God. I was just full of evil. Now you say, oh, you can't be. No, you don't understand. And I'm not going to get into that. Make a long story short. I go in. I said, there's a Chili's. They went there. So we stopped at this Chili's. So, you know, sometimes I talk, I talk real fast. The lady said, can I get you something to drink? I said, I want some water. She went, oh, okay. You know, but she's from Texas. They say water, water. Sometimes we say it's just water. Well, she came back to the table and she handed me in a, I said, get me a tall glass. I used the word tall. So I come back and the water was kind of yellow looking. Slightly yellow. Now, one of my favorite drinks before I was born again was scotch. You, you, you begin to develop. You start out with bourbon and whiskey and then after a while, and you start drinking scotch and soda, scotch and milk, so it can be healthy. <laughs> and, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Happy Carl was a drunk himself. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and before you say, yes, I'm saying we all drink. So why it? And then when you really start knowing when you start changing, when you quit drinking, you go to scotch and water. Then you get to get liking that. And then after a while, you lose the water. Now you're drinking scotch on the rocks. Now you're drinking this stuff straight. And it's just, it takes a little bit more to get drunk because your body, you know, grabs it. So watch this. I look at that and I'm thirsty. I'm going. And Kathy's just looking at me. I think they brought her a Coke or something. So I was just thirsty. So I grabbed that tall glass and Bill, boom. I mean, I went, and I went, boom. And what it was, was scotch and water, cutty sock. I went, <laughs> Now years had gone by, and I heard the devil said, swallow it. But before I could say that, Kathy said, spit it out. Spit it out. I'm going, <laughs> My body immediately remembered immediately that evil manifested I went woo, woo. she said I don't care spit it out of the floor spit it out so I went woo, 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 woo. and then I did this <laughs> my body going hey and Kathy said spit Spit out! <laughs> That's a true story. 
The lady said, is there a problem? I said, I wanted water. I thought you wanted scotch and water. I said, I didn't say scotch and water. Oh, I'm sorry. I said, that's all right. <laughs> Do you know for three weeks while I was preaching, I'd be preaching. I said, I God's word. And I had God tell me not long ago, you know, brother Jesse, you're under grace. I said, yes, sir, I know that. Well, just have a drink. You know what I, my body did? I said, no, sir. I will not mix evil with holiness. Now, that may, you may disagree with that. That's your problem. But I'll tell you one thing. Kathy ain't going to never see me drunk unless I'm drunk in a Holy Ghost. Ooh. See, which brings me to this. The difference between manifestation and temptation we be no, will be known if a great good is done by a little evil. See, the devil is, will make you do a great good with just a little evil, but it doesn't take much to get it done. Just a little evil will destroy you. Completely. Because it's evil. It goes down to the very core of who you are. Do you see that? And when you understand, remember this. It's everything you want. All shall be done. Jesus, this is why you came. To touch the world. Well, here it is. We're in the desert. Nobody going to know. This is a great good. All you got to do is worship me once. Well, sweetheart, I only committed adultery once. You're going to have to forgive me. And maybe you repented. But I promise you, if you five minutes late for that, that house, that wife goes, has she forgiven me? Yeah, she's staying with you. That's not the issue. Ah, it just takes a little bit. See, that's why your body can't go to heaven because there's the stain of sin on it. You have to have a new body. We can't even stay on this planet. I have a beautiful home, Bill. Oh, you'd love my home. Oh, Jesus. But God's going to burn it down. He's going to burn that baby down. I have artwork in there that knock your lights out. I mean, beautiful stuff. I mean, Francois Link, Paul Simone, Dasson, Zwina, Meissen, Raphael. Who's that other guy we just bought there? Guy? <laughs> I can't think of his name. Uh, uh, Rembrandt. All right. He's going to burn it down. I said, oh, Jesus, I'm going to close my eyes. I don't want to see you. He said, I'm going to give you a new heaven and a new earth. Yep. Are you learning something tonight? Because you see, you have been designed to come to the word of faith. So what is your destiny and what is your destination? You're here for a reason. And it's not just to get blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going on or blessed going on. And that'll happen. That's not the issue. The issue is, is this kind of preaching and teaching will take you where you want to be. And give you the ability to know what to do, when to do it, where to do it, and how to do it. You're going to get great persecution. I believe in the hundredfold at the very core of my being. Not because it's a lot of money. Because it's what Jesus said. And to do what I have to do, I need a hundredfold. Not a hundred times. A hundredfold. Because it's doubling every time you fold it. Which is a very big number just in 30 days. And I asked the Lord, why are you giving me so much to do? Ladies and gentlemen, July the 9th of this year, I just made 70 years old and, and people look at me and they go, well, when are you going to retire? I said, do I look tired? <laughs> no, no. I said, well, when I do get tired, I just sleep. That's all I do. I, I just sleep. I just lay down. Pretty simple, isn't it? God had to tell me to do that. I was too dumb to, do, to think about it. So I just rest myself a little bit and get, get up. And I said, well, God, I'll just get out the way and let the young people. Jeremy Pearson. I can keep that boy busy. I got over 9,000 invitations. I can't even get to. I can keep a lot of people busy. I'm, I'm not mean that pridefully. Why are you doing this, God? He said, because I can trust you. Because you know the difference between a temptation and a manifestation. You're not easily moved by something you see. 
but you're easily moved by what I say. And when he told me that, th- that lady, I talked to 20 people, but you're the first one that obeyed. Well, I like to obey and I'm doing so much better in my marriage. Not that we had a bad one. I've never cried. I didn't believe in crying because I was told not to cry. I hugged my mother once in my whole life and I was five years old and my grandfather looked at me and went, no, we're men here. I'm five years old. But that's the way he was raised. And Kathy loves it if a tear comes in my eye. She almost wants to put it on Facebook. (laughs) Just drives me nuts. She says, I haven't seen this. Jesse, you're getting softer. I said, I guess I am. I said, but you know, I promised her I would take care of her. I did. I've done that. I I will do what I say. But I've, I've learned that. And the other day, I'm watching a movie. Me and Kathy, I have a theater in my home. And I love Jerry and Karen, especially Jerry, even my brother. He said, Jesse, we come to your house. I said, oh, listen, Jerry, I said, y'all come. I said, I got to go preach. He said, well, have a good time. <laughs> and him and Carol and Kathy, they go, they go in the theater with ice cream and all kinds of stuff. I fly out at four o'clock. I preach. I get back at 12, 30, one o'clock. I think they're sleeping. No, they're in there again. They still say, hey, how was the meeting? <laughs> I said, it, it was good. All right, great, great. Boy, we having fun. And I'm glad that they feel comfortable at home. It's a blessing. You see what I'm saying? But the other day I was watching Sergeant York. Oh, yeah. I like old movies. Great. With Gary Cooper, you ever seen that thing? Excellent. My yeah. Lord. And he had the using kind of religion. Yep. Yep. He was the most decorated uh, soldier in World War I. Phenomenal thing. Well, he did something to touch me. I ain't nothing ever touch. I watch movies. I don't care what was happening. And I went like this. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, I I think a coal is trying to grab me here. (laughs) And Kathy just waits. She goes, are you crying? No, I ain't crying, bullet. (laughs) She said, you're getting softer. I said, I guess that. I said, well, I didn't mean to be mean or hard. She said, no, you've never been a mean man to me. You were mean to other people before you say, but even when you wouldn't, when you wouldn't say you wouldn't, well, like, what was I? I don't know. <laughs> you know, I would, what was, could say yes, Kathy, but no, you wouldn't know. But I mean, I would just do what I had to do. And every once in a while, that devil will show up from the old days. I shouldn't say this. This is my last. I wasn't going to say this. The Lord said, you say it. People don't understand. You won't judge me? Not long ago, I remember my grandfather said, when you marry, you take care of that woman of yours. You understand? You don't let nobody hurt her. I said, okay, grandpa. He really was a, well, a lot of bad ways influencing my life as well as some good ways. Well, we went in the restaurant, had dinner, was coming back and I was in my truck. Kathy used to fight. She said, what do you want a truck for? You don't carry nothing. I said, I don't care. I want, I want a truck. Jerry Savelle got a truck. <laughs> I, I use you a lot, Jerry. I, 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 Jerry got a truck. I want a truck. But you don't care. Now, I don't care. I want a truck. So I got me a Dodge Ram at 428 horsepower. In. And I took a vet the other day when the cops wasn't looking. I outran the vet on 310. He looked at me and I went, well, yeah, I just did what Creflo Dollar does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I ran that bit, boy. I mean, I call, I call it a bad, it's an RT. It, woo, it, they don't make it anymore. It's bad, boy. I mean, so why, we in a truck. When so I'm, we're driving back, and I have I have wrought iron gates around my home, with, and, you know, and and, and and so, but I have a side interest, you know, with wrought iron gates. Well, I drive and I see somebody in my side uh, gate, uh, to trying to get in the house, and there's a keypad. I see, and I said. Well, at first I thought, well, maybe it's just some people will stop and look at their, you know, uh, phone or something like that. So I waited for, I guess what, maybe 30 seconds. That's a long time to wait for somebody to get out your driveway. So I said, well, maybe he's lost or something. So I get out my truck and I walk over there, which police say you should never do. 
Now, I know drugs because I've took drugs, sold drugs. I've took trips and never left my house. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so I know something about drugs. So I walked this guy. He goes, I said, can I help you? He said, this is my house. <laughs> I said, no, it's not. Yes, it is. I said, no, it's not. I said, this is my house. He said, this is a plantation home in it. I said, yes, it is. I built it. He said, well, this is my house. I said, sir, it's not your house. Now, I, can, I know a stone guy when I see him. And there's a pit bull just looking at me. He's in the car. He said, you get it with me, I'll kill you. I said, boy, back your car up and get out of here. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I could feel something coming up. <laughs> Look at Kathy. I can't believe he's telling it. This just happened about two months ago. <laughs> but Kathy, I'm an honest man. I'm going to tell people my faults as well as my successes. I ain't going to let you put no halo on my head. I said, nah, I only talk one time. You understand? We got a problem here, boy? He takes his car and he backs it up, pulls out my driveway, and drives into the other driveway, this man that lives behind my home. So I get back in my truck. I drive up my driveway, and I have a thing that opens up the gate without having to hit the pad. When I did that, I started driving through, and the gate opened up again. I'm driving through. All of a sudden, he goes, backs up and tries to get in my house, tries to get in the yard. I stopped the truck. Now the gate's not closed, but the truck, like this would be when you, it's right there. And I said, I'm, I'm going to have to take care of this boy. <laughs> I get out the truck. I said, boy, he said, if you say one more word, I'll kill you. I said, you really will, huh? Okay. I said, excuse me. I walked back, opened that truck, and I took that pistol. <laughs> Kathy said, oh, Jesse, don't kill that man. <laughs> Jesse. Don't kill that man. I said, I'm going to protect you. I knew if he got in that yard, I got trouble. I got to protect us on my mind. So I took that, that nine millimeter and I walked it to him and I said, now I know he didn't have a gun. He just thought, he said, I'll kill you. And I said, what you going to do? I said, do you know Jesus? That's exactly what I said. Do you know Jesus? Because in just a few seconds, you're going to meet somebody in a minute. I said, don't let this white hair fool you. You want to dance with me? I said, the Mississippi River, I'll, I'll put your car in your truck. And also, my grandma's, my grandpa's talking. I can hear him. You got to do what you got to do. You understand? I cocked that pistol. I said, now. You can live or you can die. Mate, I can hear Kathy going, they're going to kill him. Now, before I was saved, I would not be telling this story. Because the statute of limitation wouldn't run out on that. Oh, I mean, it's amazing. Like the fear of God came on him when he saw that gun. He says this, you know, I've never had a good life. I had a real bad daddy. So I still got the gun in his head. I said, let me pray for you. Bow your head. (laughs) But I knew this kid. This guy's stone. He's crazy. (laughs) Kathy said, my God, my God, man, the police going to come. I said, well, I'll just tell him. There's the boy. We took care of it. (laughs) I said, oh, Jesus, help him. He had a bad life. (laughs) Father, come into his life. And I said, Lord, let him listen to what I'm saying. He's going to meet the devil in the next two seconds if he doesn't. I saw that dog and I looked at him. I said, you don't want none of this. That dog go, "Mm -hmm." put his head down. My mind started thinking, pop this dude, pop the dog. That's what the Mississippi River's for. I was wrong. I said, you got 30 seconds. Pull that car and get out of here. He said, is there another plantation house? 
I said, there's two of them about four miles down the road. He said, I got to go smoke a joint. <laughs> I got back in my truck. I closed the gate. And Kathy just looking at me. I said, you're safe, Kat. I thank you for saving me. But you ever thought about asking the Lord to get him out the driveway? <laughs> I thought, well, maybe the Lord needed some help. I, said, I don't know. She said, Jesse, I don't want to never see that old Jesse again. So I decided I was going to keep it private. But the Lord said, there are a lot of Christian people. They're right on the edge. I said, Lord, was I on the edge? He said, no, you weren't on the edge. And I thank you for praying for him. I said, well, I wasn't going to let him go to hell. I thought I'd get him saved. Send him to you. (laughs) Well, the Bible said, come, let us reason together. (laughs) That that ain't working right, is it, Keith? That ain't working right. right. (laughs) And I said, you know, I I said, I was concerned about his soul, but his body's mine. (laughs) And I said, you know, it's called, you know, it's self-defense. I done had it in my mind, self-defense. Just you gonna go to court? I said, yeah, but he ain't gonna be at the trial. <laughs> now, how many of y'all know that was a temptation, wasn't it? <laughs> but yet, in my mind, I was doing it for her good. Because if I he had gotten that yard, I'd have had some trouble, boy. Something was gonna have to happen because I wasn't gonna let him hurt Kathy. So I said, well, supposing he had a gun. I said, raw hide, roll them, roll them, roll I said, man, I faced guns before. It's just whoever gets the, the round into the person before the other one comes. God, Jesse, you wasn't afraid? No. Why? Because you're not thinking that. So I went, I said, Lord, I, I, if, I, if I've offended you, I ask you to forgive me. He said, you had a right motive, but in the wrong way. Yeah, you wanted to protect your wife. He said, but I could have got him out the car. But you didn't give me time to move. He said, there's not everything in the world you can handle by yourself. I said, Lord, thank you. I said, I'm not proud of that. And I said, I'll never speak of it again. The Lord said, now you're going to say it Sunday at the church. I said, God, we got some killers in our church. Eh, Some of them getting pretty close. (laughs) See, there's always, it's an if. There's always, it's the small print. See, Satan will give you something that makes you think right, but it's wrong. You understand? I hope you learned something today. Did did you? Give the Lord a great God bless you for that. Come on. Give Give him a great God bless you. Glory to God. Now, I want everybody to stand up and just pray in the Holy Ghost for a minute, if you don't mind. I know it's a little late, 930. I try to be as honest as I can with anybody that hears me. I'm not bragging about those things, Billy. I, you know, I, I, I want people to understand that, you know, all of us are human at times. There is several people here with a pornography problem and you love the Lord, but you struggle with pornography. Yeah, you do. Let me get up here in a minute. One of you so bad that after you watch it, you throw up. You get so depressed. It disturbs your stomach so much. You throw up. You've been fighting this thing when you should stop fighting and let God do what he's supposed to do. You've had it most of your life. And every time you watch it, it doesn't satisfy you. But it's such an attraction to you that it's shutting down what you need to do in life. And you've been struggling. I want everybody praying in the Holy Ghost. Head up, my eyes open, just pray it. The Lord said, get out of your seat and walk up here. 
This is nothing to be embarrassed about. This is something to be delivered from. Now, if you don't come, God can't help you. But all he wants to do is be a blessed. Why do I have to walk forward? Because that's what he said. See, that's what he said. Come, son. Stand right there. It takes a lot of guts to do this. Come on. There's more than this. Come on. Come on, lady. Come, woman. This ain't just a male problem. Come on, people, keep praying. Come on, sweetheart. This ain't nothing to be embarrassed about. There's something to be delivered from. This, this, uh, you don't need this tragedy in your life. This is an abuse of your body as well as of your spirit. And it's destroying your mind. Come on, this pornography. I know what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, can I, can I say that? Some of you think, some of you just said, there ain't nobody gonna come up there. See, that's your problem. You're afraid they won't listen to God. You don't have to protect God's reputation. God will help you if you just obey. I didn't have in my mind, well, suppose they don't come. That don't even cross my mind. So I'd get them in a, in, in a straight line across here, Roy, if we could. Come on, people, praying with me. Holla, Baba. Look at me, all of you that come. This stuff stops tonight. See, if you could help yourself, you would have already done it. Yeah. And because you've been honest. Uh, uh, sir, sir, sir. Hey, sir. Usher, let him come. Let him come. That's all right. See, if you could have stopped, just, you would have already done. You've been trying. But the Bible said, be a doer of the word and not a hearer. You don't try these things, you do these things. This is nothing to be embarrassed about. This is something to be delivered from. Look at a couple of shots. It's not that you got a demon in you. I'm not talking about that. But that attraction is there. See, you want that. But your spirit does it. It's pollution. It's abuse of yourself and the person that's doing those acts. Lift your hands up. I'm going to start praying down here. I want everybody praying. I know it's uh, 932. It won't take long. I need ushers to help me if you don't mind. We're going to pray. When I lay hands on you, you're going to sense the power. God, it's going to hit you. And it's going to take that junk out of you. Come on, people. Pray with me. Pray, play me something soft there. My brother, it'll be fine. Come on. Lift your hands up and thank God. Come on, pray with me. Touch him, Jesus. Touch him, Lord. I command, be loosed. I speak against these things. They have no right to touch these men. No right whatsoever at all, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you for it. I believe you for it. God, touch him, Lord. Bless him and help him, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, and I thank you, Lord. Jesus! Or I sat and touch him, God. Help him, Father, in the name of Jesus, that he'll struggle no more. Lord, this young lady, she's just being honest, Jesus. Just honest. This junk has followed the family. These things have happened to her. But oh, Jesus, she's free. Free, free in the name of Jesus. Free from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Come on, people, pray with me. Pray with me in the Holy Ghost. Come on, people. Jesus. Come on, young man. Just release that. Oh, God's helping you right now. God's helping you right now. Don't come up here if you don't have that. Don't come up here just because you want to be prayed for. Jesus, come on, brother. You're being set free. Young man, you're being set free. Stay behind him, boys. Come on. No more fight. No more. No more. No more in Jesus' mind. Put him down, boys. Oh, you devil from hell. You've done everything you could to destroy this man. But you will not. You will not. Because a rhema word, you free. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak the word of God today. Bless him, Lord, and fill him with that grace and that power, Lord. 
Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God Almighty. Bless them, Lord, and help them today. In Jesus' name. Yeah, I agree with the Holy Ghost. Jesus, be the man, God, that you want him to be. Stay behind him, boy, just put him down. Jesus, I thank you for it. Oh, I agree with him. He said, thank you, Lord, in whom the Son is set free. Lord, bless Travis right now. Oh, God, touch him. Touch him, Lord. Let him be free. Stay behind him, boy, the anointing of God. Oh, shikamama. Release the dead. Devil, I bind you. I bind you in Jesus' name. And I speak. I speak. Blah, you have no right. You have no right. And in Jesus' name. Power. God, in the name of Jesus, set him free. 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 Put him there, boys. Somebody shout, the Lord just set that man free. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, Masakata. Come on, Wade. This is your night, man. Oh, Jesus. This is your night. Yeah. Oh, devil. No more. No more. No more. Touch him, Lord, and help him. Come on. Somebody shout in this building. Come on. Jesus, touch, Lord. You're going to be all right, brother. This junk is over. Come on, young man. You got, you got a right to be free. You have a right to control your own mind. You have a right to control your own destiny. In Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for it. I believe you for it. I thank you for it, Lord. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Father, that whom the Son is set free is free. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for touching this young man. Oh, Jesus. Touch him, Lord. Put him on the side. Oh, breathe on him, Jesus. Set him free. And whom the Son is set free is free indeed. Stay behind him, boys. Just put him down. Brasatala Mokumbada. In the mighty name of Jesus, be free from this. People, lift your hands up and bless the Lord. Come on. Lift your hands up and bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Touch him, Jesus. Touch him, Jesus. Set him free. He has a right to be free. In Jesus' name. People, lift your hands up. Bless the Lord. Lift your hands up real quickly. Come on. All you that are praying, lift your hands up, brother. Touch Jesus. Touch him, Jesus. Touch him and help him, Lord. Come on, brother, you got your day. This is your night, see? It is, man, it is your night. Thank you, Lord. Bless this family, Lord. Oh, there, boys? To put it on the ground, that's all. Jesus! Set her free. And whom the Son is set free is free indeed. Oh, thank you, God. Come on, people, pray with me in the Holy Ghost. These are strong devils, but you're free, brother. A simple prayer would change everything you ever do for the rest of your life. How do I know that? God stopped me drinking with just one prayer. They said I couldn't stop, but I did. Why? Because the Holy Ghost did it. Jesus touch him. Oh, touch this young man, God. Help him today, Lord. Bless him, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, receive that, brother. Don't block that. Receive that. Come on. Boy, it's going to feel good not to have to be controlled by anything anymore. Controlled by the Spirit of God. Instead of by the devil. Thank you, In Jesus' name. Jesus, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, touch him. Touch him. Touch him. Maha. Ooh, the battle's over. The victory's yours, sir. Thank you, sir. It is. I'm not saying it. The Lord is. Just let him have it today. In Jesus' name, stay behind him, boys. Father, thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this young man. He had the guts to stand up and believe in Jesus' name. Oh, touch her, Lord. Oh, she's free. Free, Jesus. Free. Freedom, Jesus. Freedom. From the top of his head to the soles of his feet. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. People, lift your hands up and bless the Lord. Come on. Lift your hands up and bless the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Just lift your hands up and bless the Lord. What's that? Is he here? What's his name? Where's he at? In London. London. Lift your hands up. Lord, faith destroys all distance between me and that person in London. Send the Holy Ghost. People, keep praying with me. Andale, oh Baha. Baba here should come pray with me in the Holy Ghost. Baba Baha, Baba, they say here. Brebe Leon, Rebe, that little boy, but you see, man, come on, pray with me in the Holy Ghost. Ela Rebe, Dodo, Baha, Chukuma, did it. Okay, not it. Brebe Lolo, Bahama, my Shokuma, Re. Kela Lolo, Bohon, Rebe, Soto. Mike, let me pray for you. You and Sean, Sean, here. Just grab her hand and hold your hand. Take it, lift them both up together, this one too. Well, Satan tried to kill you. But he couldn't. And I'll tell you why. Because, you see, your ministry is so valuable. Because you're reaching people that the world doesn't want. You love people that the church doesn't like. They use it like a missions outreach for people to give to. But you, you're going to change lives. Yes. You've been struggling in those areas, financially and things. Oh, Lord. There are going to be some offers that come, but don't take them because they're not manifestations, they're temptations. But Mike, I'm going to complete you and your wife's ministry. And when it's all said and done, you're going to say the great God Jehovah has been good to me. Jesus, touch these people, Lord. Bless them, Lord, and help them, Father. People, lift your hands up and thank God. Come on. Oh, yes. Lift your hands up and thank God. Come on. Keep praying with me. Come on. Keep praying with me. Can I pray for you, sweetheart? Would you come right here? Just stand right here. People, lift your hands up and bless the Lord. Come on. <laughs> oh, Jesus, touch her. Brother, she got a surprise coming that she's going to enjoy greatly. Come on, people, thank the Lord. I see a lady behind a white picket fence. I see it in the spirit. There's a man doing this. He was very young. And you didn't know any difference. So you went and you were molested. I can see this in spirit. And that has fought you for years. If I wouldn't have gone, but you were a child. And you were told it was your fault at times. And you've never got over it. People pray with me. Just pray in yourself. The Lord wants to set you free. That was not your fault. Get out of your seat and come up here. Don't come if you don't have that. Come on, people, pray with me. I see this picket. I, I, I see it like I see that camera. If you'll come, God will help you. Is that? I was only five. Oh, come. Oh, lift your hands up. Yeah, all right, that's all you needed. Lift your hands up, sweetheart. Five years old, huh? Yes. <laughs> Devil, you a liar. Two women. Jesus! Set her free! And whom the Son is set free is free indeed. People, lift your hands up and bless the Lord. Uh, I'm trying to say no to the Lord on this thing. And I've been keeping it now for years. I didn't know your husband real well. Look closer to me. 
The last time I saw him, he had, was preaching for Happy Caldwell and Jeannie Caldwell. And he said, Brother Jesse, tell me about your Falcon 50. He said, I think, I'm thinking about believing God to get one. And I looked at him. I said, well, and I told him the specs and what I knew of it. You know, I said, it's a very, it's a very great plane. Now, I, I know nothing about your, uh, your husband's business or ministry. I mean, I just knew he was a great man of God. But I looked at him like I'm looking at you. I said, let me tell you, sir. I didn't know what I was saying, which made no sense to me. I said, don't be afraid of maintenance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And don't worry about how much it'll cost. Mm-hmm. I said, because a Falcon 50 will cost more than what you're flying now in terms of maintenance. But since God wanted, put that on your heart to believe him for that. Where you're missing it at is in your maintenance. Mm -hmm. Where you're missing it at, he said, uh, and what happened was he always went and said this, well, God will protect me. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's not the issue. But after a while, he says and says and says, he said, well, tell her he's in heaven and he's fine. But he went too soon. Right. Absolutely. Way too soon. Yes. I don't want to say that, Lord. He said, tell her it was in disobedience to the maintenance. Right. Now, I don't know nothing about anything. Yes. He said, but you tell her. I took your spirit out Mm -hmm. before they hit the ground. Mm -hmm. I took your spirit out before you hit the ground. And when I... When Brother Copeland called you up, uh, was it Monday night, I think, then you were speaking? I said, oh, that's that, that's that lady. And the Lord said, you will speak to her. I said, no, Jesus. Uh, have Brother Copeland do that. <laughs> but your ministry will flourish more since he's went to heaven and you're still here. Oh my God. There's 72 people that I've spoke to come to your church. They haven't done it because you're a woman. They're a little nervous that you're going to change the way men think. Because I'm going to put in your words such power. They will not look at your gender. They will be hearing from God. Jesus. Come on, people. Lift your hands up and bless the Lord. Come on. Come on. Thank the Lord for that. I'm trying to hurry, people. I know it. Come on, pray with me. Just, just give me maybe a, one more minute or two at the most. Let me go down here. Can I pray for you, sweetheart, real quickly? Lift your hands up. Yeah. He said, tell her she's waited long enough. Your time is now at hand. Watch what I'm going to do in just the next three weeks. Jesus, Jesus, I got some things because you're just willing to do whatever I ask you to do. And that blesses me. And I want her to know that. And I want to thank her for it. I like it because you don't think too much about your age and you never will. (laughs) Don't worry about it. I'm going to give you strength all the days of your life. Touch her, Jesus. And let her complete her destiny and reach her destination. In Jesus' name. People, thank the Lord for that. Lift your hands up and bless the Lord for that. You know, to know Jesus, instead of just to know about him, being full of the devil as a young man, I knew about God. But I didn't know God. I hope you understood my point when I said, I don't believe in God. I believe God. Because you see, I will not allow myself when the thought comes, if something is attacking me or whatever, for me to even think that way. I'll say, no, but God said. And people say, well, I know God said, but you know, you're human. I know, but God said, God said, Bill, you're this far away from your new plane. 
I've been talking to two men and they bullheaded, Bill. Just wrote it down. They, you just wrote it down? Just wrote it Did down. you tell me anything about that? No. no. He said, they're mm. bullheaded. They're not obeying. Mm. He mm. said, you, I'm going to tell them two guys if they don't do this in the very mm. near future, mm. I'm going to get someone else to do it. Mm. And what they have, they'll lose. Mm. And that's, and you wrote it down because mm. it's a petition and a supplication mm. and it shall mm. be. Say the Lord. Somebody shout. He just wrote that down. I didn't even know about that. Billy, when you came to the church and Kathy asked you to come, it was really amazing how you said, you know, I don't normally talk, but I'm going to talk a little bit about my testimony. Mm-hmm. We had a couple in our church that didn't believe in the Holy Ghost because there's Baptist. Mm. Or uh, the, the wife, I might be able to say it was. And when you said that, you know, that, that, you know that's a, I thought that was of the devil. You know, you were saying in your, in your testimony and then you really ministered greatly. Well, was it a week later, two weeks later? The next Monday night. The next Monday night she came into the, she went, came to intercessory prayer and told Kathy, she said, that lady was talking to me. I think I need to get filled with the Holy Ghost like she said. <laughs> so you got a Holy Ghost tongue talking woman simply because you obeyed God. And your time has not finished. Oh, no, 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 no. Everything thou hast done from the beginning of thy ministry has been preparation of what you're going to do in the next two years. So you be of good two years. You're going to get busy, girl, but you're going to have the strength to do whatever I tell you to do. I told him, I see that. He said, I see two baskets with flowers in it. I said, what's that? He said, in them baskets is the seeds that she sown. The flowers is the harvest that's coming her way. Get ready, because this is your time, saith the Lord. People, lift your hands up. Thank God for that. Come on, somebody shout, somebody. In this section here, you got a lot of love, but you're not giving it out. You got a lot of love, but you're not giving it out. Because somebody hurt you. And I know nothing about nobody. I live in Louisiana. We, 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 everything's done by the time I get to it. When I hear it, you know. And yet, I loved you. And you won't share that love that I put in you. But you don't know what they've done. The Lord said, tell the people, I do know what they did. But it has nothing to do with what they did. It has to do with what you do. And you know better. I just told them I don't say that. You got three days to change your mind. Three. And if you don't, You'll open up a door to wish to God you never had. And I won't be able to close it. And the Lord, I can hear the Holy Ghost saying, don't let this happen. See, the Holy Spirit is not only a comforter. He's a corrector. He corrects things as well as comfort things. The Lord said, look at your watch. It is seven minutes to 10. This starts the first day, 24, three days. It's up to you to make your decision. People, lift your hands up one more time. Oh, I'm going to be honest with you. I ain't too crazy about them kind of words. That's none of my business. I have to do what the Lord tells me to do. To know Jesus is to love him. I ask you today, do you know the Lord or do you know about him? I'm at a believers convention. Brother Copeland taught me that. He said, there are a lot of people come to believe in me that don't even know the Lord. So I'm going to ask you to give me the opportunity for you to become my brother and sister. I'd like you to go, go to heaven with us. And you're only one decision away from it. So with every head bowed, if you'd like to know God instead of knowing about God, would you give me the honor of going to the throne and say, Lord, here's a lady, here's a man. They know a lot about you, but they don't know you. And Lord, I'd like to introduce them to you. But I don't stop there. Maybe you're struggling today with, with temptations of all kinds. No, you're not backslidden to hell, but you are struggling with your Christianity. Whew. 
And you want to, well, just how do I stop that? How do I live like you and these teachers and preachers? Well, it's an old Pentecostal term. You, you rededicate. You get so close to God that when the temptation comes, and it will, but your proximity to God will burn the temptation before it has a time to attach itself to you. So with your head bowed and your eyes closed, if you'd like to know God, instead of knowing about God, that's called getting saved for the first time, or be honest with yourself, you're struggling with your Christianity and you want that junk to stop. Would you lift your hand up? Hold your hand up when I see it and acknowledge it. You may put your hand on. Yes, I see those hands. Way up in the balcony out there, I see those hands. Ushers, help me if you see hands I don't see. Thank you, I see that hand. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Thank you, I see that hand. Come on, people, keep praying with me. Could I say another quickly? This is the greatest decision you'll ever make in your life. To know Jesus as Lord or to come closer to him that you'll never, ever draw away from him again. Can I see another hand quickly? In the back, way in the back, I see your hand. Thank you. Can I see one more? Don't miss my Jesus. Thank you. I see those hands. Yes, I see those hands. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Everybody put your hand down and I want you to look at me. Everybody. This was your destiny tonight. That you would meet the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask every one of you that lifted your hand, not some of you, because I took encouragement. Boy, that took some discipline. That takes some courage to lift a hand or to walk forward. I'm going to ask you to get your Bible or your purse or whatever you brought with you. And I'm going to ask you to get out of your seat and come forward because you lift your hand. And if you do, God will change your life like you've never seen before. So right now, get you that lifted your hand, get out of your seat. If you're up in the balcony, it'll take you about two minutes to walk down. We'll wait on you. They're going to sing a song and you come and let Jesus be the Lord of your life. Sing us something there, Brother Lynn. coming. See, that's that every available voice. That's what God said. Without this convention, you wouldn't have come. I know some thought, man, I just wouldn't have walked out of there a while ago and said, well, that wouldn't have. But then you'd have a problem all your life. I tell us that the ministers never be afraid. Fear and faith cannot cohabitate in your mind. You know the voice of God. I'm going to ask each and every one of you that have come forward to pray a prayer with me. It's so simple. I'm going to ask you to repeat it after me. When we finish this prayer, you will know God instead of just knowing about God. That's called getting saved for the first time. Or if you've been struggling, that junk will stop. How do I know that? Me. The other day I went and preached at a place and they called it the awakening. I told them, I said, I've never fell asleep. I had a guy tell me, he said, man, I need some fresh oil. I said, mine never needs to be changed. My oil don't get stale. 
Oh no, I fellowship with God and I fellowship with a bit on a daily basis. Me and God had a revival in my hotel room today. Jesus, I'm telling you, man, I said, Lord, Lord, Lord. You mean you talk to him when you're not in church? I talk to him more outside the church than I do inside. Because this is where he's needed the most. I'm asking you that are watching by television, if you don't know the Lord, I ask you to pray this prayer. And the same thing will happen to you. Everyone, would you please repeat this prayer? Lord Jesus, I ask you, come into my life. Forgive me of all my sin. I confess my sin before you this day. I denounce Satan and all his works. I confess Jesus as the Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me, for drawing me closer to who you are. I believe with my heart. I confess in my mouth. Jesus rose from the dead. I am saved. I will no longer struggle with temptation of any kind. From this day forward, you are mine and I am yours. I pray this prayer to the Father in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a standing ovation. You made it! You made it! Wasn't that wonderful? Well, I've said it thousands upon thousands of times. Guess what? Y'all gonna spend eternity with me. I'm a nice guy. I'm coming over to your house. I may not be able to do it here, but when I get to heaven, I'm coming over. I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. This will not take long. One minute, maybe at the most two, brother, if you'll lift your hand up. Everyone look, see that man waving his Bible. I want you to walk toward him. We just want to pray with you for about one minute, and then we'll return you to your friends and your seats. So let's walk this way. We're walking. We're walking. We're walking. We're walking. We're walking. Come on, give him a good hand clap. Wasn't that wonderful? Are we ready? Um, everybody, I have one more word from the Lord. Jerry Savelle, lift your hands up. I was praying today and the Lord said, tell Jerry that I planted a tree in the Garden of Eden with his name on it. I saw it. Oh, my, I saw it. And I call it the giving tree because you've blessed so many. And then I thought, as the Lord spoke that to me, what they do for people that help the Jewish people, that they plant a tree in the avenue of the righteous or something to that effect, I believe. Billy knows what I'm talking more about that, you know. But the Lord said, tell him. And the angel said, why are you doing this, Father? Because he has my nature to give in such a way that it blesses me and moves me. You will be known as the giver here and in heaven for eternity. I said, Lord, I wouldn't mind having that myself. And he said, Jesse, get close to it. Stay close to him. You've taught me so much how to be a grandfather. I didn't know taught me so much. Thank you. I've never had God ever tell me such a thing. I didn't know he planted trees. I thought they they had enough, I guess. I don't know. Oh, thank you, Lord. He said, I just gave you a revelation. You know how you told me that when you get to heaven, Jesse, you you don't want to stop giving? I said, no, God. Remember we were talking about that, Keith? I don't want to stop giving. I love it. He said, (laughs) you will eat from Jerry's tree. I had to create a giving tree. Ladies and gentlemen, I I just got this. I don't know how. We were talking about that just yesterday. He said, you will give for eternity and will be happy about it. Because when you see Jerry in heaven and you see his tree, you'll know what to do, saith the Lord. Give the Lord a good hand clap. What a blessing.